Hello, and thanks for checking out Calamo this week. Uh, you know, I'm super excited about this sermon series we're in where we're exploring how God is at work in each one of our lives. You know, life has a bunch of surprises and setbacks, and God does work through our lives to give us strength and guidance. And I do believe that God wants us to live rewarding and joyful lives in these crazy times. And he does give us strength and encouragement. So stay tuned as we dive into today's message. Are disappointments getting you down? You know, I think we all have disappointments from time to time, but, but sometimes they, they kind of stack up, you know? We're in a new year, right? A, a time of new beginnings, of opportunities and adventures and all of that. And we start out the year with high expectations, those challenges and opportunities. Everything's bright and shiny, right? Well, maybe not today. Today's a little bit gloomy, but anyway, and then it hits, right? Somehow all that bright and shiny turns out to be the same old stuff. And most of the time we can shake it off, right? Yeah, we're tough. We can do it, right? But when we experience one disappointment after another, our disappointments can lead us into losing our joy of life, possibly going into a depression. And so how we look at disappointments and how we let God help and guide us uh, can help us live healthy, joyful lives, even in the face of disappointments. And so let's get into some details. And so first off, how would you describe disappointment, right? Well, maybe Santa didn't bring you that shiny new gadget for Christmas that you were counting on, right? Yeah, like that right here, or, 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 or so, something like that. Well, one definition is our expectations don't match realities. <laughs> You can, you can say that again. Well, how about that <clears throat> promotion or that new job opportunity you wanted or, or you studied all night for a final exam <sighs> and our expectations did not match the reality of the situation. So what do you do? And so let's get started with our opening question this morning. What do you do when you're faced with a, a big disappointment? Well, like we talked about in last week's message, how we face our disappointments has a huge impact on our lives and in and, and our joy of life. Well, disappointments are not the same thing as depression, right? A, a, a disappointment has a, a sense of loss, a sense of grief, uh, a sense of sadness. And, and so when we're faced with a disappointment, we, we do need to grieve. We do need to let ourselves feel sad. But what we don't want to do is deny that, that we're disappointed, right? Our disappointment's real, and there's a time to just let it out, right? But we can't stay there. We, we, we need to pick ourselves up and, and, and move along. We need to reflect on our expectations and maybe take another look at our abilities and expectations. Um, and, you know, sometimes that's really tough to do. You know, we, we really want something and, and we're just not getting it. And it's like, Ugh. well, I think that's when we can turn to Jesus as our Lord and Savior because Jesus can help us mourn. And, and then he can help us get up and then face tomorrow. And so let's look at some ways that that can work out for us. Well, the Bible gives us some great examples on how to mourn. If we go back to the writers of the Psalms, they use a, a real dramatic form of poetry to express their disappointments. And, and I've, I've really grown to appreciate uh, that, uh, it's Hebrew poetry, but, but how they, they, they talk in exaggeration and dramatic uh, words. And so listen to these words and just feel the di deep disappointment of this writer. And this comes to us from Psalm 102. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Let my cry come to you. Don't hide your face from me in this day of my distress. Incline your ear to me. Answer me speedily in the day when I call. For my days pass away like smoke, and my bones burn like a furnace. My heart is stricken and withered like grass. I'm too wasted to eat my bread. Because of my loud groaning, my bones cling to my skin. Well, you know, these, these phrases, bones burning and loud groaning, that's, that sure sounds like disappointment to me, right? Well, our friends may or, or may not want to hear about our disappointments, but God is always listening. And, and you know, one of my 
favorite psalms about that disappointment is, is this one. This, this is Psalm 13. Oh Lord, how long will you forget me? How long will you look the other way? How long must I struggle with anguish in my soul, with sorrow in my heart every day? How long will my enemy have the upper hand? Turn and answer me, O Lord my God. Restore the sparkle to my eyes or I will die. <laughs> well, the first section is about our, our complaint or our disappointment, right? And like I say, this uses dramatic language with dynamic words, struggle, anguish, soul, um, you know, it, it is, and all these phrases are kind of like exaggerated. We use, I prefer to understate things. Well, they, this form of poetry overstates things. But in any case, life is unfair. We got a raw deal. Somebody else got the job, you know, whatever our complaint is. Well, the next section helps us to move past that disappointment. And it goes like this, but I trust in your unfailing love. I will rejoice because you have rescued me. I will sing to the Lord because he is good to me. And so the writer of this Psalm is expressing their confidence that God will provide healing for their pain and a solution for the wrong that we suffered. Well, as we deal with our disappointments, once we've expressed our sadness and disappointment, it is time to move forward, right? And so the first step, let's go back in that process, let's go back and consider the definition of dis disappointment, which is when our expectations don't match reality. And so we can use our disappointments as an opportunity to reflect on the reality of the situation. What have we missed? What did we do wrong? How can we prepare ourselves better next time? Maybe we need more education. Maybe some other form of training. Or maybe we have to realign our expectations. Well, Jesus is recorded in the Gospel of John as saying this, and this comes to us from John chapter 14. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. So the advocate or the holy companion is that constant presence of God in our lives, a very real and a very personal presence that hears our prayers. And so when we cry out to God in our times of mourning, we are sharing our innermost feelings with God. And when we call out to God to intercede for us, we are opening up this channel to receive help from that holy companion. Well, Jesus also reassures us when we don't think God is listening. We hear this in, uh, in Luke chapter 18, and these are Je when Jesus told them a story about their need to pray always and then not to lose heart. And he said, in a certain city, there was a judge who never feared God nor had respect of people. So this is a, a judge that was kind of ornery and, and there was a widow that had been wronged. And she just kept going back to him and saying, judge, you gotta do something. And, and the judge finally gave up and said, oh my goodness, this lady's never gonna let me go if I don't give her whatever it is she wants. And so Jesus said this, listen to what the unjust judge says. And then, and then he says, and will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? And so Jesus is telling us to be persistent in our prayer because we keep praying. We don't think God's listening, but he is and he will provide. And so consider these discussion questions. In what ways have you reached out to God in your times of disappointment? And then how have your prayers been answered? Well, you know, I have experienced repeated disappointments in progressing in my career in engineering. Now this goes back a ways. Um, and you know, I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and for the longest time I felt God wasn't listening. You know, I wasn't getting the, the advancement I was looking for. But what I discovered was that I needed to change, right? Now, that's not the answer we're looking for. What we want is a fix, immediate fix to our whatever our current problem is, right? Well, prayer is not a magic incantation or a magic spell where you go poof and, and something changes. It is our sincere desire for something, but God does know what's best for us. And so the last point I want to make, or wanted to make is that sense of confidence we gain when we trust in God, that, that God does know what's best for us and he does care for us and, and give us what we need. Um, 
Jesus promises us the constant presence of the Holy Companion or the Holy Advocate or the Holy Presence of God, however you want to think of that presence. Jesus also reassures us that we need to be persistent in our prayer. Don't pray once and just call it good. Just keep on talking to God. And so let's take another look at that Psalm 13 and see how it ends. And this is chapter or verses five and six of that Psalm. But I will trust in your unfailing love. I will rejoice because you have rescued me. I will sing to the Lord because he is good to me. And you know, for me, these words give me comfort in my disappointments and my setbacks because these words have survived over the years and they survived because they were a true representation of what the people of God experienced. In other words, that resonated with them. Yes, that's how God has answered my prayer. And so these are not story tale, fairy tale, uh, fairy tales or, or, or just storybook tales. They are the collective experiences of God's people over the years, over the centuries. And that gives me confidence to handle my disappointments and to share that good news with others. And so our discussion, dis closing discussion questions today is, how can you use your disappointments to get closer to God? And then in that getting closer to God, how can our trust in God give us confidence, more confidence in our day-to-day -day lives? We are in a new year, full of opportunities and excitement and disappointments. And all of these give us the opportunity to grow closer to our Lord and Savior Jesus, growing in that love and that confidence to handle our daily challenges. And that brings us up to our prayer challenge. Take that five minutes each day and you're gonna to have to push away the, 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 the chaos and the interruptions of the world. But think about the disappointments that you're facing and we all have our disappointments. And cry out to God, let him hear your sadness and your grief and read a psalm. Maybe that's Psalm 13 that talks about that, that writer's grief. And then consider how God has answered their prayers. And then pray to our Lord and Savior Jesus. But whatever you do, talk with God often, trust in the Lord, and feel your confidence grow. I hope you found this message to be helpful. If you'd like some more information, please reach out. You can put a comment in the chat box for this post. You can call or text me at 517-588-8415. Or you can always use the Calamo online connection card at calamochurch.org forward slash connect dash with dash Calamo. Whatever way, you know, let us know what you think or if you got any questions, you know, reach out. We'd love to talk with you about it. And now, would you please pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for being such a loving Lord and Savior. And Lord, we all have disappointments. And so I pray that we find in you that solution to our disappointments, that, that you reveal your presence to the Holy Companion to let us feel the warmth of your love in those times of distress and disappointment. And Lord, we just thank you more than we can, we can say. And we pray all this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. I'm your neighbor, Jerry, pastor at Calmo Church. Have a great day. Have a great week. And bye for now.